Good morning, everybody, and welcome to a special edition of CPM Group Talks About podcast. This podcast has been recorded specifically for the 2022 PDAC conference in Toronto. Today, we'll be talking about high purity manganese products. But before we do, let me play you something. Well, it's water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink, so tell me now, what else can a poor fellow do, but sit right down and think. Did you like it? Well, you might be wondering what um, the 1958 song by Tommy Steele has got to do with high purity manganese. But surprisingly, much more than you might think. Like the water in the world's oceans, manganese is ubiquitous. It is everywhere. It is mined in about 15 countries, and in fact, it's the 12th most common uh, mineral in uh, Earth's crust. And in fact, uh, the resources of it, which have been uh, documented, uh, are big enough to allow us mining at the current mining rates for another 300 years. So what's the problem with it? Well, um, as you are about to find out, certain parts of the manganese industry are facing severe drought in the next several years, if I may use such a, a watery comparison. Why is it so? Because uh, the processing capacity for the um, manganese, high purity manganese products is very limited. But before we jump to the deep end and uh, start talking about high purity manganese and uh, why there is going to be a drought and which products are classed as high purity, I need to give you uh, a very brief introduction, if you like, the manganese 101 to general manganese market. So let's start with the manganese ore. It comes in two varieties as a carbonate ore or an oxide ore. And it can be anything from 5% manganese to something like over 50% manganese. Typically, the carbonate ore will be uh, less rich and uh, oxide, ore, oxide ores will have a uh, um, higher percentage of manganese in them. And um, carbonate ores are comparatively rare. Uh, majority of the world's deposit are oxide ores, which could be a mixture of MnO and MnO2. About 20 million tons of ore is mined every year. That's uh, in metal contained because obviously they, there's such a variety of uh, grades. So we, we can't be measuring uh, just uh, uh, tonnages of ore. So it's 20 million tons of ore of metal contained in the ore. And the uh, majority of it is being made into um, so-called ferroalloys, uh, the products which are going into steel production and um, special alloys and aluminum alloys, it's essentially an alloying metal. The remaining 9 to 10 percent goes into specialized products which are produced by hydrometallurgy. So the ferroalloys, you just throw their ore into the furnace and smelt it. Uh, for the specialized products, you dissolve it, then in, you dissolve the ore in sulfuric acid and uh, um, extract the final product by electrolysis, usually. And these three products are electrolytic manganese metal, electrolytic manganese dioxide, and manganese sulfate monohydrate. These three products are usually known under uh, their acronym. So EMM stands for electrolytic manganese metal, which is pure metal, 99.7% at least. EMD stands for electrolytic manganese dioxide, which contains 63% manganese. It's a chemical. And MSM stands for manganese sulfate monohydrate, which is another chemical containing about 32% of manganese. And the last M, the monohydrate, is there because um, these are pink crystals containing one molecule of water. These three products have uh, distinctly different markets. So EMM, uh, similarly to the ferroalloys, is mostly used in the steel industry. Uh, 
and in, in the alloy industry, but uh, new application in the last several years, it can also be used for electric vehicles uh, batteries. It, it is needed in the cathode of the battery. The EMD has been traditionally used for uh, alkaline batteries and the primary batteries, the ones we throw away, non-rechargeable batteries. But it's still its main application. And MSM, in its high purity variety, is al almost exclusively used for lithium-ion batteries. And in its ordinary variety, is used in agriculture. It's um, cattle feed supplement uh, component of fertilizers, fungicides, pesticides, and so on. Now we need to talk a little bit about um, purity. If I tell you that one product had 99.7% of metal and another product was 99.9% .9, uh, you would probably say they are very similar and there isn't much difference between them. Actually, there is a lot, uh, at least for battery makers. And the, this difference is not that much in the percentage of manganese they contain, but in various impurities. So battery makers, for example, have a list of uh, no fewer than 18 elements uh, which they are particularly worried about. And uh, their specifications, what they buy for batteries, um, list um, those impurities and the maximum uh, levels which are allowable. And these levels are measured in parts per million and uh, quite often uh, no more than 3 to 5 ppm of parts per million are allowed in, in, the, in the final product, which can be used for batteries. Uh, in contrast to that, the products which go into metallurgical applications can have a lot of them. So, for example, ordinary EMM goes into uh, steel making can have as much as um, 800 ppm or even 1800 ppm of selenium, for example, uh, which is a big no-no for batteries. So the main difference between the high purity EMM, which we usually abbreviate to HP EMM, and ordinary, the standard quality EMM, is the differential in the contents of manganese, but first and foremost, the different levels of impurities which are allowed in the final product. In the case of uh, the sulfate, it's a similar story uh, a list of 18 elements uh, which are which need to be uh, ha which which need to have a very low uh, impurity levels. Uh, typically, um, the 31% manganese EM, uh, MSM is agricultural grade, and 32% uh, manganese sulfate monohydrate it's a battery grade. The high purity versions of the three product which I mentioned account for a tiny, tiny part of the manganese market. Uh, in fact, they account for only less than 1% of the 20 million tons of ore which is mined every year. Uh, but uh, this opaque and um, obscure corner of the manganese market is extremely interesting. And the main reason for it is that manganese, uh, high purity manganese, is used in electric vehicle batteries and off-grid storage batteries and so on. And as you may or may not be aware, we have an electric vehicle revolution underway. And the expected growth in demand for the high purity manganese product is, is just phenomenal. And most people don't realize that. Uh, and they just take manganese for granted and they say there is pl you know, plenty of it around and so on. But um, as you're about to find out, uh, the um, high purity manganese um, production capacity is severely restricted. And that's why I started talking about the manganese drought at the beginning of this podcast. So how is manganese used in batteries? The first thing you need to know is that it's not the metal which is required by the battery maker. It's the sulfate, the, the pink powder, the chemical. Uh, this is mixed uh, typically with uh, nickel sulfate and cobalt sulfate uh, and to make so-called ternary material or also known as cathodactive material, also known as simply cathode powder. And this material is mixed with liquid and uh, this slurry is used to coat a plastic film and this plastic film becomes a cathode. And the batteries are um, named after the metals which are in their cathodes. So the most typical battery for the electric vehicles today will be NMC, nickel, manganese, cobalt. 
and there are other types as well which is LFP lithium iron phosphate and NCA nickel cobalt aluminium and most users of batteries be it in cars or mobile phones or laptops have no idea what sort of lithium ion battery they have uh, but they are obviously important distinctions from the point of view of materials which these batteries are using. So today, uh, manganese using batteries account for about half of the all batteries, lithium ion batteries produced. Uh, they are going to stay uh, at that level for foreseeable future. LFP batteries account for about 25-28% and NCA for the rest. And there are several smaller chemistries uh, which account for the remaining part of the battery market. You heard me say the word cobalt several times just a minute ago. And cobalt is indeed a very important battery metal. Uh, from the engineering point of view, it, it's an ideal metal for ba making batteries. It has all the right properties, um, both electrical, chemical, and others. But uh, there are other problems with cobalt. One of these problems is that this metal um, comes mostly from the Democratic Republic of Congo. 65 to 70 percent of uh, cobalt mined today comes from the Congo and uh, as many people know it's not the most stable country in the world um, and uh, you can't rely on just a single country anyway so um, that's one problem with cobalt another problem is its price it's simply very expensive and the third problem is that the price is extremely volatile uh, so these problems made battery engineers try to think how to quote unquote engineer cobalt out of batteries and the solution they found is to surprise surprise use more manganese depending on the price cycle cobalt can be 10 times more expensive than manganese or even 33 times more expensive than manganese or occasionally even 47 times more expensive than manganese so if you are a battery engineer and you find out that the, the physical properties of uh, manganese are in a way similar to that of cobalt it, it can fulfill the similar role in the battery and this product is 33 times less expensive than cobalt then you will think very hard how to make the best use of it in fact uh, in 2021 the average price of uh, cobalt was 15 times higher than the average price of manganese and uh, uh, right now in uh, end of may beginning of june 2022 uh, cobalt is 23 times cheaper sorry cobalt is 23 times more expensive than manganese so uh, there is a clear advantage to use manganese uh, from the economic point of view uh, as much as, as there is from the um, engineering point of view. So in this context, it's perhaps not surprising that the major car companies decided to base their electrification strategies around manganese. In fact, since uh, September 2020, no fewer than six major car companies decided to, to do just that and in the relevant announcements they said they are going to base their um, electrification strategy around uh, manganese batteries and these companies between themselves they produce uh, right now 27 million vehicles uh, uh, per year and they say that by 2030 at least in Europe the percentage of electric vehicles in their fleet will be between 70 and 100 percent so this makes a lot of difference to manganese demand, high purity manganese demand. What makes a real difference is the weight. You take your mobile phone, uh, that is just a few grams of cathode, cathode active material. You take a, a laptop battery, uh, that's just a few hundred grams, or if you, if you use a, a power tools, for example, uh, that's another a few hundred grams of uh, battery active material. But when we start talking cars, we are talking hundreds of kilos. Uh, did, did you know that the battery pack for a car like Tesla could weigh up to 500 kilos? And uh, when it comes to manganese, it can contain uh, as much as uh, 100 kilo of manganese. So um, pro mass production of electric vehicles, that's a real game changer from the point of view of um, usage of batteries and the, the materials which go into their cathode the number of electric vehicles produced also grows exponentially 
So by the end of 2018, we had 4 million electric vehicles on our roads, and it took eight years to build this, um, uh, this fleet. In 2020, the production was um, 3 million units. In 2021, it doubled by 100%, so it was 6 million units. In 2022, we are likely to produce mm, about 8 million vehicles. And if um, forecasts by International Energy Agency are to be believed, by 2030, uh, the world motor industry could produce as much as 150 million electric vehicles per year. So uh, this volume, uh, plus the fact that there is about uh, you know, a few hundred kilos, up to 500 kilos per battery pack, makes the demand simply skyrocket. So let's talk a little bit now about the where this demand for manganese, high purity manganese, is going and uh, how it can be satisfied and uh, why are we facing the deficit. Production of manganese ore is distributed around the world. As I said before, it's mined in about 15 countries. But processing this ore into high purity manganese is very much monopolized by China. 92% of the world capacity to produce high purity manganese is concentrated in China. And there are only about uh, five projects right now, uh, which are mostly at feasibility stages, which uh, are likely to deliver new production between, be between now and 2030. So because of that, and because of this exponential growth of demand for electric vehicles and batteries for them, we've, we see, foresee a significant deficit in the supply of high purity manganese sulfate. And by this I mean high purity manganese metal and high purity manganese sulfate. Sulfate is the key ingredient, but as I mentioned before, some battery makers prefer to make it themselves, and that's why they buy um, metal to dissolve and make sulfate themselves. There are also possibilities that in future we may not use the sulfate for batteries, we may use the metal, metal powder. These technologies are at the moment at experimental stage, but uh, watch this space. Uh, we may be using more electrolytic manganese metal than the sulfate in the future. When I wanted to illustrate the growing deficit for high purity manganese sulfate, I started using ordinary Excel uh, uh, charts, using bar charts, but uh, uh, quickly <laughs> realized that the numbers are quite literally off the scale and these charts were not good enough. So, um, Eventually, we came out with this. This is an area chart, and each area represents a certain tonnage of uh, supply and demand of manganese sulfate. And as you can see, um, even though the, the global production is expected to grow about five times between now and 2030 with this new project in the pipeline, uh, we still see a significant deficit. This is this um, orange dotted line. Um, but the demand could be even higher if we take into account the fact that right now a number of companies in China and in Europe and in other places are working on enhancing the LFP batteries, which were traditionally not using manganese at all, by adding manganese. And uh, the manganese can, will replace iron in these batteries and it can replace as much as half of the iron. And if these technologies were to come to bear fruit, and became mainstream, and all the batteries, which uh, are LFP batteries, which are forecast to be needed um, between now and 2030, became those LMFPs. Uh, this is how much extra demand they would add. The, the the purple line, the purple dotted line. That is still uncertain. You know what technology will eventually uh, win, uh, but that's a possibility. So now you understand why this opaque and obscure corner of the manganese market called high purity manganese is so interesting and this is facing such a phenomenal growth. As you can see, there are many moving parts in this picture. There are electric vehicles, there are bumps in the road, charging infrastructure, there are changing chemistries, um, changing sources of supply. And it's really very important, both for investors and for uh, companies involved in this business, to have a, a very good research on this. And I think, um, without undue modesty, I might say I must say that 
GPM Group has one of the best uh, teams around when it comes to high purity manganese um, products. And uh, we don't produce any off the shelf uh, reports for public distributions. Each report we produce is tailor made for our customer needs with different stresses, be it geographical or product uh, leaning, and so on. Uh, and so far, uh, our customers were quite happy with our uh, work. So I encourage everybody who is interested in this obscure corner of the market, manganese market, to come to our website, www.cpmgroup.com, and uh, speak to us about high purity manganese. Thank you very much for your attention. Well, it's water, water everywhere, not a drop to drink, so tell me now, what else can a poor fellow do, but sit right down and...